Welcome back to Learning to Code with Python. Today, we're going to have some fun by extending the animation example we made last time. In our last video, we learned how to create a ball object and use that ball object definition to create multiple balls that will bounce around the screen. My question at the end of the last video was, what if we wanted to not have three balls, but we wanted to have 100 balls bouncing around the screen? Well, of course, we could say new ball four, new ball five, new ball six, and so on, and also remember to do them in the animation loop. But that would be a lot of typing and a lot of repetition. So there's definitely a better way. The better way is to use a property of objects in Python. Objects can be treated just the same as any other kind of variable, which means that just like with a string variable or a integer variable, for example, we could put them in a list. So why don't we make a list and add all of our balls to that list? So we could make a list called balls. And that's going to start out being an empty list, nothing in it. And now instead of creating balls individually, what we're going to do is make a loop. And let's count to 100. And each time through this loop, we want to make a new ball and add it to the list. Well, the command to add something to a list is take the list and we say dot append. Append means add to the end of the list. So what do we want to append? We want to append a ball with, and we'll start out just making them all be red and size 50. Okay, so now instead of creating these balls individually, we've now got at the end of this loop, we've got a list called balls that has 100 individual ball objects in it. So now all we need to do in here is tell our program that we want to move all 100 of those ball objects. So we can use a loop for that as well. We can say for each ball in the ball list, ball dot move. So we're going through, we're doing a loop through the list of balls, one at a time, and we're using the variable ball to stand for each ball. And then we're saying, take that ball and move it. Now let's see what happens. Now, the first thing you might notice is that doesn't look like 100 balls. And they're all very clumped together, right? They're not spread out. Can you figure out why? The answer is that each ball, when it's created, we give it a random x speed and a random y speed. But our choices for what those speeds could be is very small. It's only between 1 and 7. So out of the 100 balls, a lot of them are going to have the same speeds. So they're all right on top of each other. So let's make it spread out a little bit more and have a little bit more action. So one thing we could do is we could increase this, this number, right, to spread out the ball some more. How about we go between positive and negative numbers? So sometimes they'll be going to the left, sometimes they'll be going up. So let's see how much difference that makes. There we go. Now we have them much more spread out. There's still a little bit of clumping because there's still not that many differences in the speeds. So another thing we could do is we could change the sizes. They don't all have to be the same size. Instead of having 50 here for every ball being the same size, we could change that to a random number. So let's say we wanted to make this random between 50 and 100. I just replaced that the number 50 with this command to pick a random number. So now I'll have objects that are all different sizes. There we go. So some of them are fast, some of them are slow, some are bigger than others. And here's a little question for you. Do you know why this one isn't moving at all? Well, in our random speeds, 
the x speed is anything between minus 10 and 10. Well, 0 is in between there. And the y speed is also between minus 10 and 10, and 0 is between there. So it's possible to get a random speed of 0 and 0. And how about the color? Well, if you remember when we did our random colors in the turtle exercises, we can do a random color by having a list, and I've already typed one here with a bunch of, tar a bunch of colors in it. And instead of them all being red, I want to pick a random dot choice of colors. Right, remember the random dot choice command tells the computer to pick something out of a list. Now I've got a lot more color. And you can play around with that, change things around, try making the balls all be bigger. Maybe you want enormous um, shapes bouncing around. Right? They don't have to be circles. You can get some pretty cool effects. You want to change this into rect rectangle. Now instead of creating ovals, our balls are all rectangle shapes. The last thing I want to point out, and some of you might have already gone and tried this out, is this number right here. How many balls were animating around on the screen? Well, eventually, remember your animation is happening in this loop. And the computer is going through this loop and it's going through each object in the list and moving it. Each object in the list and moving it. And then updating the screen and then trying to do it again. The bigger this list gets, the longer it's going to take the computer to do this step. And the longer it's going to take to do this whole loop. Which means that at a certain point, things will start to slow down. Now, where the slowdown happens depends on how fast your computer is. But for example, and I'm going to shrink these down again just so that we can see it, go back to a small size. For example, if I increase the number up to 500, now there's five times as many objects on the screen, and it's still pretty smooth. But what happens if I made it 1,000? And double it again. Do you see how it's starting to get kind of choppy? The computer can't move that many objects fast enough for the animation to still be smooth. So that's about it for this program. Go ahead and experiment with it. Try making changes. See what kind of effects you can get to happen. Have fun with it and see what you can make. And I'll see you in the next lesson.